to everybody that chose to join us today. We're happy to see you. Well, I can't see you, but happy that you decided to join us. Uh, let us pray. Most holy and gracious Father, we come now to study your word, asking as always that you would open our hearts and minds to receive your fresh. Father, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so we are continuing on article number 11, the perseverance of saints. Our author writes, we believe that such only are real believers as endure unto the end, that their persevering attachment to Christ is the grand mark which distinguishes them from superficial professors, that a special providence watches over their welfare and that they are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation. And our main scripture continues to be John the 8th chapter, verses 31 and 32. And it reads, To the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. And so our focus continues to be on the latter part of verse 32, and the truth will set you free. And so we'll continue today um, on our third declaration of freedom. Freedom from discouragement, no frustration. And that's found in Romans, the eighth chapter, verses 18 through 30. And today I'll read verses 26 through 30, and it's coming out of the NIV version. So it says, in the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our heart knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. And so Paul here, in the entirety of our verses, uh, speaks of suffering and groaning. He speaks of creation groaning, believers groaning, and finally he speaks of the Holy Spirit groaning. And today we have made our way down to the Holy Spirit groaning. Uh, because of our present suffering, it, it's not worth comparing with our future glory. The creation groans, the believer groans, and the Spirit groans. But the Holy Spirit doesn't just groan, He also helps us. He helps us to endure suffering so that we may patiently look forward to the final redemption of our bodies when Jesus returns. The Holy Spirit feels the burdens and He shares the burdens of our weaknesses and our suffering. And He prays for us in His groaning so that we might be led into the will of God. We can be encouraged in our trials because of the hope of future glory. Troubles won't last always. They have an expiration date. And we can be encouraged in our weakness because of the intercession of the Holy Spirit. Paul says that the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. So praying is another one of those things that uh, does not come natural for us. Praying is a challenge. Even for seasoned saints, we are commanded to pray without ceasing. And we're told repeatedly in the Bible that God hears our prayers. Now, since that's true, then the question can be asked, 
Why is it so hard to pray? Why is praying so difficult, even for mature Christians? The Apostle Paul says it's because of our weaknesses. Note that Paul does not say the Spirit helps, also helps your weaknesses. But he writes the Spirit also helps our weaknesses, meaning that Paul didn't say that he had it all together. So we can feel we can have some kind of assurance even just in that. And instead, he includes himself with us as one who was also weak. I wonder if maybe one of the reasons we don't pray as frequently or as fervently as we should, maybe it's because we don't recognize how weak we really are. Sometimes I think we're guilty of thinking, we got this. We got it all together. I mean, it's okay. Sometimes we're like toddlers, thinking that, you know how little toddlers do, by the time they're two or three year old, they can do it all. It's like, I can do it. No, no, I can do it. Even stuff that their little bodies are too little to actually do. If we knew how weak we really were, we would be constantly crying out to the Lord for help. Jesus didn't say, you can get along with all you you can get along with all of the everyday stuff without me. Just call me when something gets really big. No, he said, apart from me, you can do nothing. And nothing if you break it up, it means no thing, not even the simplest thing. You, you ever knowingly or maybe possibly unknowingly looked at some of the people in the Bible as being superhuman? For instance, Elijah. Wouldn't you have loved to have been on Mount Carmel when Elijah prayed and, and after he prayed, God just showed out? by sending fire that licked up burnt, off, burnt sacrifices. It licked up the wood, the stone, the dust, and even the water. When's the last time you saw fire literally licking up stuff as though it was cleaning its plate? Then there was the time when King Ahaziah Ahaz 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 fell through the lattice of his upper room and injured himself. And, and, and he wondered if he was going to die. And so instead of sending word to Elijah to find out what God would say, whether he would live or die, he decided to send word to Beelzebub, a false god, to find out if he would recover from his injuries. But God sent Elijah to intercept the messengers and, and, and to make a long story short, the king sent twice. He sent a captain and 50 men to arrest Elijah. And both times, Elijah caused fire to consume them. You really have to read the story because it, it really is a good read. I don't know about you, but when I read that story, I, or when I read about Elijah and, and how fire just came down from his prayers, I was like, Elijah was not a man to be messed with. But then James tells us that Elijah was a man with, he, he, with a nature, a natural, uh, a nature like ours. He, in other words, he was a man just like us or, uh, or a human just like us. He was weak just like we are. But he prayed, and he, he prayed to God who was strong, and it was God doing all of those amazing things through Elijah. Then another giant of the Old Testament that, I don't know about you, but it awes me, is Moses. Can you imagine standing before Pharaoh, the king, and calling down plagues on the king and his kingdom? That was a bold move when you consider the power of a king. And Moses didn't just do it once or twice, <clears throat> but he did it 10 times. Then at the Red Sea, 
he stretched out his hand over the sea and, and the Lord caused the sea to divide. And, and the next morning, the sea was dry ground so that mil, a million plus people could cross over. And not only the people, but they had the animals and the carts and they had all their stuff. And, and, and all of it, all of them with their stuff crossed over on dry ground. And then that same sea covered back up when the Egyptians and, and their army tried to take the same route. Then there was the time that, that Moses' uh, word, just his word, his, his praying to God caused the ground to open up and swallow alive the folk that was uh, trying to challenge his leadership. And, and then let's not forget that he hit the rock and water came out to satisfy a million plus folk and their animals. And, and then finally, my favorite is, can you imagine being 80 plus years old and going up and down the mountain as often as Moses did? I don't know, in my mind, I, I just, you know, he's just going up and down the mountain. And to me, that's like amazing. Uh, so Moses seemed to be a rock of spiritual and physical strength. And yet we read in the 90th Psalms, he is lamenting. He is sad over the frailty and the shortness of life. And then the Psalm ends with a plea for God to establish the work of their hands. So Moses was aware of his weaknesses, which is why he prayed. He knew that God and not him was in control. Those were God's folk and he was God's vessel. And if God didn't establish the work of his hands, it would all be in vain. He never forgot that God was sovereign and it was God who was doing the leading. And then we can look at the Lord Jesus himself. He is the only one that has been on this earth and has lived a sinless life. And with boldness, he confronted the religious leaders without fear of their threats. He knew they were after him, but, but it didn't stop him. He overturned their money tables and whipped them out of the temple. He called the most religious folk of that time hypocrites and pronounce woes on them. Now I hear you thinking, but that was Jesus. He was supposed to be strong. And yet Jesus said in John 5 and 19, he says the son can do nothing of himself unless it is something he sees the father doing. And then the, the 16th verse of, of Luke the fifth chapter says, to, uh, tells us that he often slipped away to the wilderness for prayer. In his humanity, Jesus knew that he must depend on the Father for all things. As humans, we are weak, and knowing that should cause us to constantly cry out to God in prayer. Not to tell God what to do, how to do it, and when to do it, but for worship and, and, and fellowship and adoration and, and instructions. Prayer is a constant reminder that God is the only source for help and strength. Prayer is not a time for us to instruct God. It is not a time for us to make God aware of our solutions to our problems so that he can carry them out. A story is told of two monks. The first one says, I need oil, says an ancient monk. So he planted an, an olive sapling. Lord, he prayed, it needs rain that its tender roots may drink and swell. Send gentle showers. And the Lord sent gentle showers. Lord, prayed the monk, my tree needs sun. Send some sun, I pray thee. And the sun shone, gliding the dripping clouds. Now my 
tree need frost, my lord, to brace its tissues, cried the monk. And behold, the little tree stood sparkling with frost, but at evening it died. Then the monk sought the cell of a brother monk and told his strange experience. The brother monk said, I too planted a, a little tree. And see it? It thrives well. But I entrusted my tree to its God. He who made it knows better what it needs than a man like me. I laid no conditions. I fixed no ways or means. Lord, send what it needs, I prayed. Storm or sunshine, wind, rain or frost. Thou has made it and thou dost know. So, so we are told to pray, but at the same time, we must agree with Paul that we don't know what to pray for. And, and so we can't give God instructions on how to do whatever it is that we're praying for because we don't always know God's will. Thus, we don't know how to pray. The Spirit shares our burdens. He intercedes so that we might live in the will of God. Our weaknesses should cause us to cry out to God in prayer. We should feel encouraged by the fact that the Spirit is praying for us and that, and that should encourage us to keep praying. His intercessions for us are always in harmony with God's will. He doesn't pray for anything outside of God's will. Not that Paul does not, not note that Paul does not say the Holy Spirit removes our weaknesses, but that he helps us. He comes to our aid in our infirmities. We live the whole Christian life in the condition of weaknesses. We are never strong enough to say, I got this. I, I don't need you anymore. We like to think of ourselves as strong, but that's not the case. And, and, and that's a good thing. We should never feel that we are so strong that, that we can handle ourselves. The Holy Spirit comes alongside, alongside as our helper and gives us wisdom and strength. No matter how much of a prayer warrior you may think you are, or you may think someone else is, the reality is that every Christian experiences these weaknesses, and it is this that makes prayer difficult. The point is that we are all weak in many areas of our lives, and prayer is included in those weaknesses. But thanks be to God that he doesn't just leave it, uh, he, he doesn't leave us to ourselves. God so graciously gives the Holy Spirit to help us by interceding for us in our weaknesses. The fact that the Holy Spirit helps us by praying for us should encourage us to pray often. He knows, our, he knows us intimately, and he knows the perfect will of God. Therefore, we have no reason to be discouraged or frustrated. God's got this. He's got it. He's got you. He's got all of us, all of our problems. He's got all of our needs. So we should be encouraged and not discouraged. Well, that's it for today. Let us pray. Father, we come as weak vessels, depending and leaning on your strength to, to carry us through. Father, we ask as always that you would show us what to do with what we've heard and then give us the courage to do it. Be sure to check us out Check out our, all of our teaching on our YouTube page. It's Mount Sinai MBC of Memphis Incorporated. And be sure to hit the little bell to subscribe 
so that you will be notified when a new message is posted. Also, feel free to leave a comment on the page to let us know that you're listening. So, see you next time. Have a wonderful, blessed week.